The Evil Eye by Lady Jane Wilde. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Evil Eye by Lady Jane Wilde. There is nothing more dreaded by the people, nor considered more deadly in its effects, than the evil eye. There are several modes in which the evil eye can act, some much more deadly than others. If certain persons are met the first thing in the morning, you will be unlucky for the whole of that day and all you do. If the evil-eyed comes in to rest and looks fixedly on anything, on cattle or on a child, there is doom in the glance, a fatality which cannot be evaded except by a powerful counter-charm. But if the evil-eyed mutters a verse over a sleeping child, that child will assuredly die, for the incantation is of the devil, and no charm has power to resist it or to turn away the evil. Sometimes the process of bewitching is effected by looking fixedly at the object, through nine fingers, especially is the magic fatal, if the victim is seated by the fire in the evening when the moon is full. Therefore, to avoid being suspected of having the evil eye, it is necessary at once when looking at a child to say, God bless it, and when passing a farmyard where the cows are collected for milking to say, The blessing of God be on you and on all your labors. If this form is omitted, the worst results may be apprehended, and the people would be filled with terror and alarm unless a counter-charm were not instantly employed. The singular malefic influence of a glance has been felt by most persons in life, an influence that seems to paralyze intellect and speech simply by the mere presence in a room of someone who is mystically antipathetic to our nature. For the soul is like a fine-toned harp, that vibrates to the slightest external force or movement, and the presence and glance of some persons can radiate around us divine joy, while others may kill the soul with a sneer or a frown. We call these subtle influences mysteries, but the early races believed them to be produced by spirits, good or evil, as they acted on the nerves or the intellect. Some years ago, an old woman was living in Kerry, and it was thought so unlucky to meet her in the morning that all the girls used to go out after sunset to bring water for the following day, so that they might avoid her evil glance, for whatever she looked on came to loss and grief. There was a man also equally dreaded on account of the strange fatal power of his glance, and so many accidents and misfortunes were traced to his presence that finally the neighbors insisted that he should wear a black patch over the evil eye, not to be removed unless by request, for a learned gentleman curious in such things sometimes came to ask for a proof of his power, and he would try it for a wager while drinking with his friends. One day, near an old ruin of a castle, he met a boy weeping in great grief for his pet pigeon, which had got up to the very top of the ruin and could not be coaxed down. "'What will you give me?' asked the man, "'if I could bring it down for you.' "'I have nothing to give,' said the boy, "'but I will pray to God for you. "'Only give me back my pigeon, and I shall be happy.' "'Then the man took off the black patch "'and looked up steadfastly at the bird, "'when all of a sudden it fell to the ground "'and lay motionless as if stunned. "'But there was no harm done to it, "'and the boy took it up and went his way rejoicing. "'Some years ago,' A woman in Kerry declared that she was overlooked by the evil eye. She had no pleasure in her life and no comfort, and she wasted away because of the fear that was on her caused by the following singular circumstance. Every time that she happened to leave home alone and that no one was within call, she was met by a woman totally unknown to her, who, fixing her eyes on her in silence, with a terrible expression, cast her to the ground, and proceeded to beat and pinch her till she was nearly senseless, after which her tormentor disappeared. Having experienced this treatment several times, the poor woman finally abstained altogether from leaving the house, unless protected by a servant or companion, and this precaution she observed for several years, during which she was never molested. So at last she began to believe that the spell was broken, and that her strange enemy had departed for ever. In consequence, she grew less careful about the usual precaution, and one day stepped down alone to a little stream that ran by the house to wash some clothes. 
stooping down over her work. She never thought of any danger, and began to sing as she used to do in the light-hearted days before the spell was on her, when suddenly a dark shadow fell across the water, and looking up she beheld to her horror the strange woman on the opposite side of the stream, with her terrible eyes intently fixed on her, as hard and still as if she were of stone. Springing up with a scream of terror, she flung down her work and ran towards the house, but soon she heard footsteps behind her, and in an instant she was seized, thrown down to the ground, and her tormentor began to beat her even worse than before, till she lost all consciousness, and in this state she was found by her husband, lying on her face and speechless. She was at once carried to the house, and all the care that affection and rural skill could bestow were lavished on her, but in vain. She, however, regained sufficient consciousness to tell them of the terrible encounter she had gone through, but died before the night had passed away. It was believed that the power of fascination by glance, which is not necessarily an evil power like the evil eye, was possessed in a remarkable degree by learned and wise people, especially poets, so that they could make themselves loved and followed by any girl they liked, simply by the influence of this glance. About the year 1790, a young man resided in the county of Limerick, who had this power in a singular and unusual degree. He was a clever, witty rhymer of the Irish language, and probably had the deep poet eyes that characterize warm and passionate poet natures eyes that even without necromancy have been known to exercise a powerful magnetic influence over female minds. One day, while traveling far from home, he came upon a bright, pleasant-looking farmhouse, and feeling weary, he stopped and requested a drink of milk and leave to rest. The farmer's daughter, a young, handsome girl, not liking to admit a stranger, as all the maids were churning, and she was alone in the house, refused him admittance. The young poet fixed his eyes earnestly on her face for some time in silence, then slowly turning round, left the house, and walked towards a small grove of trees just opposite. There he stood for a few minutes, resting against the tree, and facing the house as if to take one last vengeful or admiring glance, then went his way without once turning round. The young girl had been watching him from the windows, and at the moment he stopped, she passed out of the door like one in a dream, and followed him slowly, step by step, down the avenue. The maids grew alarmed and called to her father, who ran out and shouted loudly for her to stop, but she never turned or seemed to heed. The young man, however, looked round, and seeing the whole family in pursuit, quickened his pace, first glancing fixedly at the girl for a moment. Immediately she sprang towards him, and they were both almost out of sight when one of the maids espied a piece of paper tied to the branch of a tree where the poet had rested. From curiosity she took it down, and the moment the knot was untied, the farmer's daughter suddenly stopped and became quite still, and when her father came up she allowed him to lead her back to the house without resistance. When questioned, she said that she felt herself drawn by an invisible force to follow the young stranger wherever he might lead and that she would have followed him through the world, for her life seemed to be bound up in his. She had no will to resist, and was conscious of nothing else but his presence. Suddenly, however, the spell was broken, and then she heard her father's voice, and knew how strangely she had acted. At the same time, the power of the young man over her vanished, and the impulse to follow him was no longer in her heart. The paper, on being opened, was found to contain five mysterious words, written in blood, and in this order. Sator, Arepo, Tenet, Opera, Rotos. These letters are arranged so that read in any way, right to left, left to right, up or down, the same words are produced, and when written in blood, with a pen made of an eagle's feather, they form a charm, which no woman, it is said, can resist but the incredulous reader can easily test the truth of this assertion for himself. End of the Evil Eye by Lady Jane Wilde